Hello everyone, my name is Kevin. And I'm here to show you the installation process today for a Mopeka Pro Plus BLE and cellular version. Before we actually get to the physical installation of the sensor, we want to make sure that we have the proper tools to make sure that this is going to be a successful install. First thing you're going to need is your smartphone. Make sure you download the Mopeka Copilot app either from the Apple Store or from the Google Play Store. After that, you're going to need to make sure that you have a Mopeka IoT registered ID. It will be issued to you either from your uh, Mopeka distributor or from the self-service part of the application. Next, you're going to need two screwdrivers, one Phillips head, one standard head, and lastly, you're going to need your Mopeka Pro Plus sensor kit that you received in the mail. Next, let's review what comes inside your Mopeka Pro Plus sensor kit. First thing you're going to notice is your Mopeka Pro Plus sensor itself. You'll also find two AAA Energizer Ultimate Lithium batteries. Next, you'll see a packet of Mopeka Sonic Grease. And lastly, the remote magnetic antenna for communication. Before we actually do the physical installation of the sensor on the tank, it's important to understand the makeup of your tank so that you put the Mopeka Pro Plus sensor in the proper position. For today's demonstration purposes, we're going to be using this 250 gallon propane tank right here in the Mopeka IoT yard. When you look at the tank, you'll see that we want to install the sensor away from any internal workings of the tank. In the middle of the tank, we have our fill port and we have our gauge with our dip tube here. On the right hand side, we have our liquid withdrawal valve. That has a tube that goes all the way to the bottom of the tank. Over on this side though, this is our pressure relief valve. There is no tube that goes to the bottom, so therefore the real estate underneath this part of the tank is open and is the preferred spot for our installation. Now that we've identified the proper location to install our sensor on the tank, it's now time to assemble our sensor. So I've grabbed our Mopeka IoT Pro Plus and the remote magnetic antenna. The first thing you're gonna see is that there's one brass fitting at the end of the remote antenna and one location to screw it in on the sensor. I'm going to take it and gently push it together, and then I'm going to screw this down until it's hand tight. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove the screws here on the top of our sensor so we can get access to the battery compartment. If you're working in a yard or in the grass, make sure that you have some place to put your screws once you've removed them since they're very small. Next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to turn around and get access to the battery compartment. If you look at the left side and the right side of the sensor itself, around the green uh, lid, you'll see that there's an indentation on either side. You can either use your nail or use the flathead screwdriver to gently push in there and pop off our sensor top. This will expose the battery compartment inside. You can see that we have two battery compartments, one on the right and one on the left. So go ahead and grab your batteries. The plus and minuses are clearly marked in here, so make sure you line up your batteries properly. When you put in the second battery, you're going to be greeted with two quick beeps. This means that the sensor has battery power. If this is a cellular version of the Pro Plus, you're going to get three more beeps once it's connected to the cellular network in the area. There's our three beeps. Now I know that the sensor has power and it's talking to the cellular network in the area. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my lid. We're going to line this up so that the Mopeka name is at the top of uh, the sensor. And we're going to firmly push this in there. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my screws. Carefully not dropping them. And now my sensor is fully assembled and ready for installation. Now that we've assembled the sensor, we're ready to go ahead and put it on the tank. But before we do that, we need to make sure that the tank is in good condition. In order for the Mopeka IoT sensor to install properly, we want to make sure that the paint's in good condition, there's no flaking paint underneath the tank, and that there's no debris, whether it be dirt or moss. So we're going to go ahead and take some paper towels in this case. I'm going to reach under and make sure it's clean. There is no flaking paint. I've cleaned off the bottom of the tank and now we're ready for installation. Now that our tank is clean and ready for installation, I'm going to want to go ahead and mount my magnetic antenna. I like to put it up here, right above where the sensor is going to be installed. This turns around and makes sure that 
the antenna has uninterrupted service and can get to any towers that might be in the area. We're now ready to turn around and add our sensor to the system. In order to do this, we need to go ahead and grab our smartphone, and I'm gonna go ahead and start the Copilot app. Once that's started, you can see in the right-hand corner there's Add Device. We're gonna go ahead and hit that. What this will do is it will activate the QRC code in the camera so you can scan the sensor into the system. If this doesn't work, what you're gonna do is you're gonna manually put it into the system by hitting Add Device Manual Entry, and you'll get presented with a serial code and a part number. The serial code and the part number are on the QRC code. The serial number will start usually with zero, in this case 00003188, and the part number will start with an M, M101-5050A, and hit submit. Next, the sensor is gonna to wanna to talk to the phone and let it know that the battery is installed and ready to go. If it doesn't go ahead and read right away, go ahead and hit the green button a couple times and wait for the sensor to turn around and communicate with the phone. Once it's done that, it's verified that the batteries are connected and you'll notice that the next button has gone from light gray, uh, green to dark green. Go ahead and hit next. Next, we're gonna be presented with the device information screen. Uh, everything here that has a red asterisk is a required field. So for this one, the top, from top to bottom, we're going to start with device name. This one, we're going to usually uh, give it a name that means something. We tell our customers to use usually a, a customer's name and the designation. In this case, I'm going to call it the Jaffe, and it's going to be the house tank. Moving on, the next field is device address. This address is not the actual physical location of the sensor. This is the actual unique identifier that has already um, been scanned in via serial number um, of the sensor. So that will pre-fill automatically. Then we have tank number and a lot of our customers either use that to designate whether it's tank one, tank two, or they use it to put in a serial number or an asset number associated where this sensor is going to go. In this case, I'm just going to put one, two, three, four. Next, we have asset type. I'm gonna go ahead and click right into the middle of that, and that's gonna bring up a, a drop down here. Uh, I have a choice of either company bulk inventory, company owned tank, or a customer owned tank. Well, in this case, this is a, a Mopeka tank we're gonna be putting it on today, so it's company owned. Next, we have commodity. I'm gonna go ahead and click right into the middle of that, and that's gonna give me a list of all the different commodities the sensor can work on. Uh, for today's uh, example, we're going to be on a propane butane tank. So I've clicked that. Now that all my fields are filled, once again, the next button's gone from light green to dark green, signifying that I can move to the next step. The next screen is we're going to turn around and assign this to a dealer, uh, give it a tank size, a branch location, and a customer. Now, uh, if you are a single dealer, this will most likely only give you one choice. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and click in there. We've set this up for Bob's Propane and Gas. I'm going to go ahead and click that. That will now fill that field. The next field is the tank size type. Now, by clicking in there, this will give me whatever tank files that I've already preloaded. If none of these are the ones that work for you, go ahead and click out of this and hit the Add button. So today we're going to create a tank. The one we're using today is a 250 gallon horizontal. So I'd like to give the label name a 250 gallon tank. Um, we want the max fill height to be the overall inner diameter. So by looking at the plate on the tank, we know that it's 30 inches. The overall height of the tank will also be 30 inches when you're dealing with propane. Um, that way the system will show you that 85% is actually 85% and not 100%. And then we're going to give the volume. And this is a 250 gallon tank. And once again, it's horizontal. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. That is now pre-filled into my tank size and type. The next thing I'm going to do is click into the branch. These are pre-loaded. Um, and usually are set up by your Mopeka distributor. In this case, we're gonna choose the East Branch, and then we're gonna go ahead and click into Customer. Now, for this one, we have Bill Johnson in here and or ready to go. However, if I wanted to add a customer on the fly, I would hit the Add button, and a new customer screen would fill, uh, show up here, 
and allow me to go ahead and put a new customer in on the fly. But for today's example, we're going to go ahead and hit cancel and we're going to just use Bill Johnson. Once again, all the fields that are required are now filled. The next button has gone from light green to dark green, signifying that we can move to the next step. Let's go ahead and hit next. Now what's going to end up happening is your sensor is going to talk to the cellular network. Um, in this case, it's already been attached to AT&T Wireless. And because it has that connectivity, we're able to hit the next button and go to the next step. Next step is going to show you a quick video on putting the grease on the sensor. Um, we're going to put it into the middle of the sensor and get it ready to go and get it ready to install onto the tank. Now that you follow the instructions on the previous screen and have placed grease on the sonar pad, which is located in between the two magnets, we're ready to go ahead and install this on the tank. On your Copilot app, you're going to be greeted with a screen for your angle indicator as well as your quality reader. What we're going to do is we're going to get under this tank, install the sensor, trying to get it as level as possible, at the same time trying to get the quality indicator up into the green, which will tell us how good the signal is going into, that, into this tank. So I'm going to go ahead and get down here. I've gotten gone here and got it onto the tank. I'm fairly level. And as you can see, the quality indicator has gone up now into the green. This can take up to 30 to 60 seconds, so be patient. Um, we're at 205 here, so we're ready to go ahead and hit next. That both requirements have been met. And now we've moved on to the next screen where it's going to verify what it reads into this tank against, once again, against your gauge here. Do not be surprised if your gauge is off anywhere from five to seven percent. The sonar is way, way more accurate. Now that we're the verified measurement screen, I want to call out one thing. If by chance your Mopeka sensor is drastically different than your gauge here, the first thing I want you to try to go do is look at the dimensions of your tank and go back into your Mopeka IoT dashboard and verify that the tank dimensions are correct. You're going to want to go to mopeka.cloud. Otherwise, it's very possible that your gauge is stuck, bent, or broken. Do not be surprised. Sonar is highly accurate, and we trust what the sensor is telling us. Now that we're fully installed, you have your sensor reporting into your Copilot app, as well as your Mopeka Cloud dashboard, you can see how easy it is to install the Mopeka Pro Plus sensor.